This is Kathy Hanner, and I am standing here at the Spirit of St. Louis Airport in Chesterfield, Missouri, where insiders have told me that Travis Cook is planning to make an appearance. He has not officially made a public statement regarding his suspension from last month's show in East Condolette, Illinois. I am going to be waiting here to see if he shows up because I have a few questions from him and hopefully get a public statement and find out exactly what is happening with the situation and what's going to happen with his wrestlers at next month's match. So let's see if he shows up and uh, maybe we can get the inside scoop on what's really going on behind the scenes. Hey, I just won another game of words with friends. Woohoo! This is just how I want to spend my Sunday and Labor Day weekend. Where is he? I've been here for two freaking hours and he's not even showing up yet. I'm starting to wonder if he's even going to show up at all. I mean, seriously, I'm thinking, I'm starting to think I'm wasting my time. I have other things I could be doing besides waiting here for Travis Cook to show up at an airport. I mean, I got stuff to do. Oh, look. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There he is, there he is. Travis, Travis. Can I? Is there any way I can get a couple words for you? Well, gee, you're here anyway. Go ahead. Ask me. For, well, for one, why are you here? Why am I here? It's an airport. Why do you think I'm here? Where are you going? I'm sorry, but after your, I heard about your suspension last month and he's kind of let, and there's been no statement from you whatsoever, and I think the fans have right to know what the heck is going on in the Travis Cook organization. Oh, I, I bet you enjoyed that little night, didn't you? I bet you and Herb Simmons and Larry Matizik and Ricky Cruz and Gary Jackson and all those other yahoos, you really enjoyed that night. The whole, you know, Travis getting handcuffed by the local, uh, local cops and thrown out of the building, that was real fun to you, wasn't it? You enjoyed that. I bet you enjoyed that. Personally, I thought it was quite humiliating. I didn't like it. And let's just say my lawyers have been informed of that situation, and they're going to be taking a look at it. I'll make a, a statement on the little arrest aspect of this a little bit further down the road. But let me tell you this, what happened, okay? Look at where I'm coming from here. You, a lot of people say that, that I'm suspended, it's a good thing, but that's not, that's not the case. I'm totally justified in what I did in hitting a referee. At you hit a referee? Yes, I did. I should have hit him more often for what he did. You see, here's what you're not seeing. Every time the Travis Cook organization has gotten Ricky Cruz into the ring for a championship match, Ricky Cruz has cheated and keep, kept the title away from us. A few weeks ago, it was Dave Vaughn. Ricky Cruz used a chair in full view of the referee who stood there with his hands in his pockets, twiddling his thumbs, and let it happen. And then a few weeks later, it was Ken Casa. Ricky Cruz, low blow to Ken Casa. Oh, that's real legal, isn't it? Referee just stood there. Dumb look on his face, counted the three count. So the only thing I did, I know what happened here. Herb Simmons, Matizik, all the rest of them, they've got these referees intimidated to do what they want because they've never liked me anyway. They, they don't like the fact that they've got a star in their midst and they can't control him. So they intimidate these referees to, to go against the Travis Cook organization. Well, I took it upon myself to walk into that ring and do a little referee intimidation myself. And I knocked Jimmy Harris, that referee, I knocked him right out on his can. So I, I informed him physically, shall we say, how better to do his job. And what do I get in thanks? What do I get in return? A suspension. A suspension. Now, do you really think that's justified? You hit a referee. I mean, isn't there another way that you could have made your point rather than going after the ref? I could have brought out a tire iron. That would have probably been better, but I didn't choose to do that. But now they've suspended me as so some kind of a punishment or something like that, right? That's, a, that's supposed to really punish me. That's supposed to really make me learn my lesson. Is that it? Okay. Let me tell you what I'm doing on my suspension, okay? I want to know why you're at the airport, first of all. Where are you Missy, going? Missy, pipe down a little bit. I'll tell you why I'm at the airport. I'll tell you what I'm doing on suspension. Right now, you can see my plane back there. My plane's back there loading up with fuel, getting ready to go. I'm going home to Florida, honey. I'm going home to Florida for a week. And then the week after that, I'm going to Vegas. Dead Mouse is playing over at Steve's Wind Place. Steve Wind's Place, I'm going to have a great time. You see, I was out of this business for a year and a half. And I had a great time. I could do whatever I want. I've already made my money in this business. I've already been successful in this business. I don't have to do this for a living. The only reason I came back was out of a competitive fire and a competitive desire. But I could, I could live like this forever if I wanted to. But you see, 
The problem is a lot of people wonder why I don't just do that. If, if I'm so mad at what's happening here, if I'm so mad at what Larry Matizik's doing and Herb Simmons and the rest of these clowns, why don't I just leave? Why don't I just live off my investments? Why don't I just live off my money? So let me ask you this then. Oh, go ahead and ask me. If your big plan is to leave to Florida and to be suspended, what about your wrestlers? What about your guys? What's going to happen to them? Are they going to be wrestling next month? What, uh, who's, you know, who's going to look after them? If you're gone, are you just going to up and leave them? No, I'm not going to up and leave them. I'm, I'm a loyal guy. I have a trait of loyalty that seems to be missing in America today. You see, while I know it would be preferable to have the strength of my masterful knowledge at ringside and my brilliant strategy, we live in an era of modern technology. Mm -hmm. We live in an era of the smartphone and the iPhone and the text message. And what I'm telling you is that sep in, in September, at that September show, and frankly, I thought about showing up anyway just to cause some trouble, but I won't put you through that, Herb. I can be sitting there wherever I'm at in a hot tub somewhere at poolside getting a massage. Maybe I'll be, maybe I'll be in a booth over the Rhino in Vegas and through the use of of a smartphone and text messaging, I can control every single thing that happens on that SICW show. So even though you're physically not going to be there next month, you're still going to be techno technically, you know, through technology, you're still going to be there instructing your guys on what to do. Easy for you to spit that out. What I'm telling you is that I might be three sheets to the wind, I might be under a table passed out somewhere, or I might be somewhere in Vegas that we really can't talk about on the air, but... I'm going to control every single thing that happens. And if I decide that Ricky Cruz needs his leg broken, his leg will get broken. If I decide that Herb Simmons needs to be slapped around, he'll be slapped around. And there's nothing you can do about it because you can't come to Vegas and get me. You can't come to Vegas and get me at all. Wow, those are some pretty big words and some pretty big statements that you just made there, Travis. They absolutely they are. I don't, I don't make anything other than big statements, but there's one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. Ron Powers. Ron Powers. Ron Powers. Last month in East Carondelet, I made you a little bit of an offer. I tried to talk some sense into you a little bit. You see, Ron, I know you don't like me. I don't like you. I know you don't trust me, and I damn sure don't trust you. But if you sit and think about it, man, you and I are fighting the same thing. You and I are fighting the same people. And everything that Simmons and Matizik and the rest of them are doing to me, they're trying to do to you. This could just as easily have been you as me. So I want you to think about that. I'm not telling you you've got to come to Vegas and party with me. I'm certainly not telling you that I'm going to come over to your place and have a barbecue. I can't stand you. But you and I have a lot in common right now. And if they're marshalling their forces against people like us, then I think we need to marshal our forces and implode this place from the inside. Now, honey, if you don't mind, i got a plane to go catch. Well, I guess that's all the questions and the answers that we're going to get for today from Travis Cook. Um, stay tuned to see if, uh, I guess, to see what happens next. Is he going to come back? Is what's going to happen to his wrestlers? And what's going to happen down at East Carnival next month? And I guess nobody really knows. Kathy Hanner from the Spirit of St. Louis Airport here in Chesterfield, Missouri, where I just spoke with Travis Cook. And um, stay tuned.